primary role of the JSC has been around capital formation. How do we get capital to entities to scale them up and grow, and then create a robust marketplace for them to trade and do their business operations. Our response and our excitement through JPP is um, to respond in a very different fashion. It's a new era for the JSC. It's been a global trend away from public markets to private markets. And, uh, and by launching JSC private placements, the JSC is providing an alternative for capital formation for growth companies of South Africa. Um, we've taken on a genre-specific focus uh, that resonates with the national agenda objectives, things like SME development and infrastructure, but really uh, JC Private Placements gives you an alternative to raise capital, uh, through, either through private equity or private debt, which will stand alongside our public market space and give investors and, um, and entrepreneurs and businesses opportunities to find different sources of capital. So this journey started in 2019 where the JC knew we needed to respond to alternative capital raise through private placements. Um, and uh, in, uh, throughout the 2020 year, we worked on that vision and we saw the funds and the um, flows build up in the space. We entered into a strategic partnership through an equity investment into a UK fintech called Globacap. Globacap is an established uh, private placements business in the UK and we use their technology to roll out JPP. So JPP is operational officially. Um, we got our license in December of 2021, our FSP license, and have gone live with our first deal in, um, at the end of March 2022, this year. So uh, freshly live uh, throughout the 2022 year. Our first deal that went live is a hospital development in Messina in, in Limpopo, right on the border with Zimbabwe. It's a private hospital. There's no private hospital um, within 200 kilometers of, of Messina. And so we're really excited to be partnering with um, the developer to help him raise his capital. He's currently looking for 140 million rand. Half of it is debt and then the, the equity is coming through JPP and um, went live in uh, end of March. And, and, and we've already started to see some appetite from investors. We have seen such a tremendous response, um, all sorts of different types of SMEs and infrastructure developers coming to us. So lots of renewable energy projects, lots of housing projects, student housing, um, hospitals uh, seems to be the flavor of the month. So really, really, really um, thankful for the amount of uh, appetite that we're seeing in the market. And it talks to the fact that this is a product that's been needed for a really, really long time. Not only does it give you the real-time um, visual of um, where the deal will come live and what the parameters of that deal is, it also gives you ease as we standardize certain processes. Now, this is not a listed environment. We're not working off a listing regulatory framework, but we are trying to streamline processes um, through a digitized solution where things like your KYC or your ML or even uploading of your prospectus and, and some standardization in the legal documents that are required would come up onto the platform and then you can have as an investor more choice, more, vis more visibility um, of, of where these deals are and, and what's the opportunity set out there. And as the platform matures and the marketplace matures, you start then building a track record or a history or a database of some of the comparatives that you can find in the industry. So really it has a, a huge value add of centralizing a solution and then creating more transparency, visibility and ease of doing business. So it's a focus of the JSE, the focus of JPP to say if we're going to rebuild the economy post-COVID, SMEs are critical but so is infrastructure. And so those are the two focus points that we've made for JPP. From an infrastructure perspective, obviously energy is, is, is a big challenge, um, but we've also seen other projects come to us. Uh, we've seen a gas to liquids project. Uh, we've seen a, a toll road project. We've also seen some appetite from the rest of uh, the continent, um, places like DRC, Lesotho, Botswana. So that infrastructure need across the continent is something that we are hoping to, to make an impact on. In responding to such a big need, we've seen the growth in the private markets 
asset um, growth over the past decade. It's probably twice that of public market investment growth. Second, we're sitting on a continent that has north of $150 billion just in infrastructure need alone and a funding gap between that. So the, um, the state of our market, I guess we ripe for growth. And as Sam had mentioned, there's various sectors and various uh, industries that this could respond to. The potential for infrastructure across the continent has to be double underlined. Um, roads, airports, I mean, we've seen some of the uh, catastrophe that's occurred in KZN and, 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 and the need to rebuild that infrastructure, but, but brand new infrastructure in rural areas, um, power, water, and, and we're so encouraged by all of those developers that have come to us that are saying we want to uh, raise capital so that we can roll out infrastructure. Mining has been another point of interest. Um, we, we, we're seeing a good demand for battery related minerals where people want to um, participate in the battery revolution and in the EV revolution. And, and so we're saying welcome, uh, come and raise capital. We have ESG focused investors that are very, very keen on those kind of investment opportunities. And so the mining, the infrastructure potential really excites us.